boxing page. Left hook, Jeff Lacey, still getting it done, or at least trying to, 37 years old. Member of the 2000 U.S. Olympic team. His first 27 fights, 25 and two. His last five, not so good, just two and three. And there is his opponent out of Cuba, known as El Mastelentoso, which I'm told is the great talent. He's from Cuba, graduated high school there in 1999, and has a perfect record of 14-0 with nine knockouts. He is 32 years old, but I'm sure an extensive amateur okay, gentlemen, uh, career in Cuba. Want a good, clean fight? Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Just how extensive? Well, I got the answer for you. A little over 300 amateur fights for Barrera, but of course, Lacey, 220 amateur fights. He was a member of the 2000 U.S. Olympic team, but that was a long time ago. You touched on it. Lacey's lost four of his last seven, knocked out twice in those losses. I think Lacey has the looks of a shot fighter to me. Barrera, I'm going to say Barrera's going to knock him out. And I know that's going way out on the limb. Most people don't say that before the fights. They wait till, you know, the guy's been down four times, and they say, well, you know what? He might knock him out. But I'm gonna, I've gone out on the limb before. I'm going to say Barrera knocks out Lacey. We'll find out. I'm just wondering whether or not the people here have basically served the former world champion Lacey up as a sacrificial lamb to an undefeated prospect who maybe they think is, maybe they think is going somewhere. Big right hand connects from Barrera, and all of a sudden, Lacey's quickly back against the ropes. I just don't think Lacey should be fighting anymore. I, I really he have my doubts front. about him at 37 years of age. You know, not just fighting, but fighting with this kind of an opponent in this kind of spot. Lacey beat some of the best B-level, B-plus level fighters in the world, but when he got up to that A-level, when he fought Roy Jones and Joe Calzaghe and Jermaine Taylor, he never could get it done. Don't push, don't push. Barrera now teeing off indiscriminately to Lacey. Step back, let him out, step back. Lacey from seven years ago push. probably knocks Barrera out. But tonight, not looking good so far, a minute into round one. Yeah, I have my doubts whether or not someone like Lacey, you get 220 amateur fights, a lot of fights, former world champion, taking a lot of punches, a lot of miles on that old Domino. That might question whether or not he should be fighting. I don't think he should be fighting anymore. I don't think he should have been in the ring with his opponent. Five, I said it before the first six, punch was thrown. Seven. And obviously I'm eight. saying it again. Come here. Walk to me. Come here. You all right? It's not for see. a lack of being in shape. You see he's got a six-pack. His tone looks fantastic. But he's been in so many battles, taking so many headshots over the years. Up. Well, this referee's going to have to watch because... You know, the corner, of course, has a responsibility here, too, but remember, they were part of the decision-making that put Lacey in this position, put him in this fight at this point in his career. So I think the referee's got to be the one ready. I mean, Lacey's shot. He's a shot fighter. His legs are gone. Uh, he could wind up getting hurt here. I think this fight should be stopped. Break! Step back. Step back. Lacey still doesn't have his legs underneath him from that first knockdown. The referee's watching him. The referee wants to stop this fight, I think. And I think he's right. I think the fight should have probably been stopped before he signed. I mean, look at the legs of Lacey. I mean, he's, got, he's got no pins. He's got no pins. And that's neurological sometimes, where you just... You've been in a fighter that's been in that many fights, taking that many punches. The signals don't go down to the legs. The legs, the pins, they don't... They don't look sturdy anymore. And he, I hate to say it, but he's got exactly the look Lazy does of a fighter who's been around too long. You know, those those legs that just that just don't respond well. Time. Put those punches in front. All skill ain't lost. All skill ain't lost. Give me my ice pack, please. My ice pack. You okay? I need my ice pack. On the neck. On the neck. Jay, you can't stand in front of him. Stand to the left. Stay to the left. 
shoot to the body. You got to stay. You got to stay ridiculous with this jab, Jay. All skill ain't lost. You see the right hand there, the jab set it up, the right hand. Lazy's leg's just not good. Left took a little push, but the leg's not steady. And again, the right hand, Lazy caught it at the end of it. That's probably why he got up. You could see at the end of the right hand, he was pulling back, took a little off it. But still, Lacey does not have the durability that he once had. But again, you see, he gets pushed back in real time. He gets pushed back a little bit right into the line of fire. And then the left hand sets up a long right hand. And again, Lacey got caught on the end of the right hand. Not the full impact of it, but enough to put a 37-year-old Lacey into a bad place. The, bad, the worst thing I can say about it right now is Lacey was in a bad place before he got put into a worse place. He was in a bad place coming in here. Teddy, is it a case of his friends, his trainer, his manager simply not saying you've done enough, it's time to walk away, or is it Lacey saying, I don't care what you say, I'm still doing it? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not privy to that, but it's probably a combination of both. Probably a combination of, obviously there's people around them that is saying, okay, we'll, we'll go forward, we'll give it a shot, and uh, maybe they're not realistic, maybe they don't see the truth, or, uh, you know, I don't know. But um, and maybe it's Lacey, obviously, saying, no, 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 I can do this. You know, and I still want to do it. That's what somebody has to see, you know, in this business. You know, you're a baseball player that stays around too long, you embarrass yourself. But you don't get hit in the head. You know, you don't get hurt. See, that's the thing that worries me about boxing sometimes, is there's no national committee, no national commission to really make those decisions. And they're tough. Who's to say that someone doesn't have a right to make a living, to pursue a living? But there's got to be standards. There's got to be rules to protect the fighter from this kind of situation. You know, in, in football, and baseball, and basketball, you don't have to worry about somebody going too long. You know why? A team won't sign them. The stats show it, too. Yeah, the stats show but they won't sign them. It's like the team won't sign them again. But in boxing, there's always someone that'll put a guy in as a stepping stone, and that's what Lacey's in here tonight, as a stepping stone. There's always someone who'll put a guy in as a stepping stone for $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. Not to mention, Lacey is still a bit of a name. People have heard the name Jeff Lacey. They know he used to be pretty good, and it'll look good on Barrera's resume. Let's I tell you, Barrera's not looking good if he doesn't get rid of Lacey. I'm gonna be fair here and say both sides. Barrera needs to get rid of him, you know, and blow him out of there probably this round. If, if really they're going to get what they wanted out of him. They knew they had a shot fighter. They knew they had a name on his, that, on his way out, and they wanted to exploit that. They wanted to take advantage of that. Well, if they're going to take advantage of it, they need to get rid of a guy that everyone can see now he should get rid of. Somewhere in the back of Lacey's mind, he's thinking, I've still got my left hook. If I can just land it one good time. Break. Step back. Step back. Break. Step back. So all looked lost in round one, but as Lacey's corner said to him, all still ain't lost. He's still in there. Just barely, though, as Barrera catches him with a straight right. Break. Step back. Time. So two rounds in the book. Lacey still in it, at least technically, against Sullivan Barrera out of Cuba. Todd Grisham, Teddy Atlas, ringside. We heard from Brian Campbell. We heard from Bernardo Asuna. We haven't heard from you. I'm what not going to throw a punch at you. I don't want you to faint right on national TV. Thank you. You okay? You you good? You all right no, now? I'm, my... Because you looked a little peaked. <laughs> you looked a little <laughs> pale. I do. Can you color back? All right. All right. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mether. Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather. I can't even talk. He touched me. What are your thoughts on the possibility of that fight actually happening now? It's going to happen. I put my guarantee on it. It's going to happen now because, look, what it comes down to is Pacquiao is so eager to make the fight because he doesn't have any options. I mean, he doesn't have anywhere else to really go to get the numbers that they want to get, the pay-per-view numbers that will give him the numbers in the bank account that he wants. The only thing that's been holding it up, not Mayweather being afraid, Mayweather having a chance to fight someone else first. Get a chance to Time. fight Cotto for pretty good Maybe numbers. The key to me is you don't see Cotto. That's the ace in the hole. It's like a card game here. You don't see Cotto, 
well, then you're going to wind up seeing Mayweather and Pacquiao because Cotto would be the only reason now that Mayweather would not wind up fighting Pacquiao because he's got two fights left, Mayweather, on his contract with Showtime, guarantee of $30 million. And with an upside, you can make maybe 40 45 With Cotto, you can do that. There's no one else out there. So you don't see Cotto. I don't see Cotto. I don't see him anywhere around. That tells me Floyd then is going to go and make the fight with Pacquiao. That fight's going to get made. All the boxing fans, I shouldn't say all, but most, hope it happens. If anything, other than just so we don't talk about it anymore. Seven years in the making between Mayweather and Pacquiao. Look, as picket as you look, you look better than Lacey. Uh, and then, and Barrera, that. I'm not impressed with Barrera. I mean, really, it's backfiring on them. They got a you know, fighter who is it's pretty obvious. Is, is in pretty bad shape here, Lacey. And uh, you know what? He, he's probably going to wind up knocking him out. There go the legs he, again. He, he's he's got to take two rounds to knock him out. All right, all right. Lacey trying to buy time. If you stare at Lacey's legs long enough, you'll see his knees lock up. Yeah, I mean, his legs look, you need to make fun, but... I mean, we're not making fun, but his legs look like, you know, your grandmother's spaghetti on Sunday when she made it on Friday. You know what I mean? The legs are soggy. And when the legs are soggy with an old fighter, that means the signal's not going through to those legs. Those legs are not responding. They're not, they're not the way they're supposed to be. Lacey, 37 years old. Barrera, 32. He's not a spring chicken. And Barrera's a lot bigger. Just look at the size difference. I mean, he's been bigger throughout his career. He's been as high as 202 pounds, half his career at cruiserweight, while Lacey has been a super middleweight his, you know, his whole career. Lacey started boxing at the age of seven. Said he got into fights at school all the time, so his dad, as punishment, took him to a boxing gym. But the lesson backfired because Lacey fell in love with the sport and has been boxing ever since. 30 years in the sport. But it's not bad enough that Lacey has all these problems. I mean, he also has a lot of inactivity. Feels feels like to me, or it looks like to me, retirement. If you go back two fights ago, he was off three years, Todd. Before that, he was off almost a year and a half. So, you know, there was a reason why he was off that, that long. Break. Break. There we go. Who would have thought that Lacey would survive two more rounds after how bad round one ended up? Yeah, well, it tells you Herrera is not the greatest prospect in the world, as much as his people might think he is. It's a Fox Theater flashback. Irish Mickey Ward, who's fought on Friday Night Fights 24 times. No one's been on this program more. He picked up this knockout in May 18, 2001, right here at the Fox Theater at Foxwoods Resort and Casino. And now the doctor talking to Jeff Lacey. Good. Okay. Right, good. Neutral corner. I don't know if you could hear the doctor, but he said, protect yourself. You got one round left. But as you can see, Keith, thanks, Tom. there are five <laughs> rounds left. <laughs> thank, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that. Time. Really, no, 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 no. advice. Thank you, Tom. I'm time. Here. One point. My pink is skin. One point. Low blow. One point, low blow. Okay, mira, no lo pega atrás de la cabeza tampoco. Let's go. Time in. Go. Can you see the bigger guy from there? I Taller, but just bigger. Campaign out of his career, the cruiserweight. I mean, you got a cruiserweight in there with a junior middleweight. A 37-year-old junior middleweight. 
Jeff Lacey did win his last fight December 13th against Timothy Hall. Yeah, Timothy Hall is about four wins and about 20 losses. And that's not really his accurate record, but he's an opponent. The fight before that, he didn't win. He got knocked out. Oh, there's his record, 9 and 18. Break. Back. You know, there are guys out there you can beat even when you're finished in your career. There are opponents out there that you can find. But the fight before his last fight, Break. So the place he was knocked out in two. Come up, Come up. Well, Lacey was asked what his job is now, and he said it's still boxing. It's my job. It's my love. He just can't walk away. He's got two sons, a three-year-old and a four-year-old. So they count on him, depend on him to bring money home, and this is the way, at least right now, he's choosing to do it. No, no, no. Lacey complaining of hits behind the head. I didn't see one, but I saw that one right to the front of the face. So there it is. Well, you know, he took, uh, he took four rounds of damage that he didn't need to take. Because I don't believe this fight needed to be there. But that's me. Here's the merciful end of the fight, Teddy. Take us through. Yeah, the left hand keeping separation, getting full extension on the right hand. Didn't come back with the left hook there the way you should after the right hand, but he didn't need to. Barrera again, finding a home for the right hand. Lacey trying to counter in between, but at this point in his career, he's a little late. And there's the right hand that started his demise. Here's the very end. The referee had seen enough. He's seen enough all night long. And he finally pulled the plug on this one. Look, all the heart in the world, Lacey, and I don't take that away from him. He's got the heart of a former champion, and he showed that, but his days are gone. It happens. Now for the official particulars, we send it up into the ring. Here's Phil Tufano. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at two minutes, five seconds of round number four. Referee Mike Ortega calls a halt to the action. Your winner by TKO victory and still undefeated in the blue corner, Sullivan Barrera. So Sullivan Barrera, a winner by TKO, 15 and 0 now with 10 knockouts in his professional career. Hopefully for him, he gets a sterner test in his next bout. We expect a much more competitive contest coming up in our main event. Carl Dargan, undefeated, 17-0 with nine knockouts, facing off against Canadian Tony Lewis. That's coming up. We are live at the Fox Theater getting set for our main event. But first, let's look back at what was supposed to be a great fight weekend, the trilogy finale between Alvarado and Rios. But boy, did it disappoint, unless you're a fan of Brandon Rios. It was all one-way traffic. We thought that Alvarado would try and fight on the outside and not get into a slugfest. Turns out he didn't do either one of those things. He was a human punching bag as Rios landed six times as many punches Alvarado retired on his stool at the end of round three it's time to look like a champ brought to you by just for men it's our CompuBank CompuBox statistics and look at the punches thrown and landed Rios 120 landed Alvarado just 20 he only threw 87 Alvarado even after the fight acknowledged that he didn't train properly Teddy he wasn't in shape to go in there in this fight. What do you think the future holds for both these men? Well, I mean, look, the future of Rios has a future. Alvarado doesn't right now. That's the second time he's quitting a fight. He quit against Provodnikov on his stool. You know, at least he tried a little bit more, but he took a beating. He quit on his stool, and he quit the other night. I mean, that's one thing you don't want to see a fighter do. First of all, he took 
He put his signature on the contract. He took the 750000 or what, somewhere around there that he made, and he wasn't ready, but he took the money, and he has an obligation to be ready. He wasn't. He paid the price. He took a terrible beating. But then in the end, he got out of it by quitting. I mean, when the referee, the uppercut worked all night long for Rios, actually any punch he threw was going to work because Alvarado was just a punching bag. But the referee... The referee asked him, hey, do you see, how many fingers do you see? Put two fingers up, and he said four. I mean, you don't have to be the Mason Kreskin. I know I'm not in his mind, and I'm not in his body, but please, Todd, everybody out there, we're not fools. I mean, he didn't see four fingers, but he said four fingers because that was his way of getting out of punishment. He didn't have another way. He didn't have a way of going and throwing punches, moving his head, you know, taken to the body. That was his way to get out of taking that beating the rest of the night. So he fabricated how many fingers he saw. Look, the, probably his corner should have done the right thing and not had him in that position. They, they should have probably stopped the fight so he didn't have to embarrass himself as a fighter that way. But again, he did the one thing that you never want to see a fighter do. He spit the bit. He quit. He did quit. It looks like Alvarado's next fight is going to be in a courtroom as he faces felony charges. It is now time for our main event, and we expect...